Hey guys, in this module, we're going to talk about JSON schema and JSON schema validation. So first of all, what is JSON schema? Uh, JSON schema is the JSON object that describes the structure of another JSON object. So it's a kind of a contract that defines uh, what properties should be in the response, what types of those properties and overall structure of the entire object. And let me show you why this can be super useful. Remember previously in our lesson, I was showing you this simple example of client server application. When clients send the request with username, password, server provide the response with first name, last name and age, and then client displays this information john smith your age is 35. but imagine other situation when developers of the api suddenly made some changes and uh, removed the age property from the response so when the client requests username and password response coming back just with john smith but without the age what's going to happen then in the application you may see something like this your age is undefined and this create integration issue and actually a breaking change but if we would have a json schema that would validate that we expect to have age property then we would not have this issue and you may ask a reasonable question hey but i can just create an assertion for each of the property in json object and validate that way if the property is not there then the test should fail well, this is a very simple object with just three properties, but real JSON objects in real APIs may have hundreds of properties and it will be just a nightmare trying to validate all of them. And also it's not needed and we talk about it a little bit later. So now, how would you create a JSON schema and how does it look like? So you can Google different online tools like JSON to JSON schema converter and this is one of them on transform tools json to json schema and this tool can take the json object and convert it to a json schema so let's convert some of our objects real quick so going to the postman this is a tags endpoint i send the request and that's the response that is coming back so let's transform this response into the json schema i'm copying this uh, response pasting right here and pasting right here and on the right you can see the schema is generated so let's review it one by one what do we have so schema and title we can skip that then uh, the type of the response is the object you see it's a json object and schema defines okay the object should be in the response then what properties this object has uh, this object has just a single property which is a tags Tags should be type of the array. You can see the tags represent the array over here. And the items of this array should be a string. And also this text property is a required property in this response. So what all that means? It means that, for example, if our response would suddenly return numbers instead of the strings, the assertion would fail because schema requires the items to be a string or if tags for example would return an object instead of the array the schema validation would fail as well because the schema explicitly say that response type have to be an array and also this property is required and if this property for example is optional you can remove this property completely from the schema and then if property does not return the schema validation will not fail but if the property name will be changed for example from tags to just tag then assertion will fail because the property name is different and this is how the schema works and let me show you a second example uh, with the, for example, with the articles. This is list of the articles, looks at this giant object with uh, 200 lines of code. And imagine creating the assertions for 200 lines of code, right? It would be just a madness. So I'm control A, control C, and going back over here and pasting it over here. So new schema is created and look, this schema is smaller than our actual object. This object has 211 lines, but the schema is just 85. Why is that? Because our object has a repetitive uh, kind of uh, information. It's object with articles and each object has absolutely the same structure. So this is object number one, number two, and so on. So every single object in the response has slug, 
title, description, body, and so on. Then again, slug, title, description, body, and so on. And schema knows about it. Schema knows that we have a repetitive type of response. It's over here. So it's articles. The type is array. And the items in this array have to be an object. And those objects should be this type. Slug, title, description, body, tag list, and so on. And also the types. The slug have to be a string, title have to be a string, and so on. For example, favorite have to be a boolean, favorites count have to be a number, and so on and so forth. So then if something goes wrong, if any of the property will be missing or the type of the value will be missing and we will validate against the schema, we will not miss uh, that something is wrong with our object. We will not miss the mistake. Because you see, the object sometimes can be pretty overwhelming. But if you just compare object to a schema, if just a single item or a single property went off, you immediately will know about it. You also might heard about the concept called contract testing. So there are two types of contract testing. is a consumer-driven contracts and provider-driven contracts. So when we do validation against the uh, response of the API, we essentially are doing a provider-driven contract testing because API is our provider and schema is our contract of expected response from the API. So by doing this kind of validation, we are doing technically contract testing, provider-driven contract testing, which is very powerful to catch the integration issues. All right. So see you in the next lesson.